What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Imperfect. And guys, I have a person with the farthest distance from me. Not possible, but pretty far. And I am very excited because this is a guest I've been keeping an eye on for a minute. And we finally be able to get her on. This is Molly Taylor. How are you doing? Hello. Um, I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Trying to stay in quarantine, you know, stay safe. Yeah, yeah, everyone is. But um, yeah, it's a shared kind of experience. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. it's gonna be awesome. So she is from Sydney, Australia. Well, you're from London, right? Yes, I am originally from London, but moved to Australia just under two years ago when I was wow. 18. That's crazy. How's it been out there? Um, definitely better than the UK on my personal experience. Um, there's sunshine. There's like everyday sunshine, even when it's winter. Um, nice. You walk to the beach. And yeah, I just in general, the lifestyle is just much more active and like more mindful. And that's what I was searching for. Awesome. You know, I love that you found it. Um, Molly, we have you on because we have a lot to talk about. And I don't want to introduce you as a fan of Yes Theory because I feel like you're an advocate. You are someone that goes after this branding, this this culture, and you want to actually grow it in a whole different experience. So I got to ask you, like, when did you start watching Yes Theory? And when was the moment that you're like, this is something that resonates with me? Um, it's kind of crazy. I think I kind of subscribed around 10,000 subscribers. So a very long time ago at the very beginning. I can't remember too vaguely what video it was, but I just know that ever since that day, I can't remember the exact date, it had resonated for me from the very start. But I've also realized that it wasn't them that then gave me a new idea. It was that it was always within me. And that seat discomfort kind of lifestyle is within everyone. But as soon as you become aware that you have it by watching their videos, for example, you then realize, oh my God, like I've been doing this my whole life. Like we ride bikes when we're trying to learn how to ride bikes when we're younger. We try and make new friendships, which is pretty um, scary. We do like little assemblies and we do like little performances. And little do you know that like we've been seeking discomfort our whole life. So um they've been a voice for like the whole world basically and then as soon as you find them it's like wow like this really does um resonate with my life and that's why I'm so passionate about it yeah I'm with you 100% I felt the same way I was much later down the trail but I remember finding them at a couple million subscribers and I was like, these guys have something so significant that it's just mm. like you said, they're, it's already within you. It's just someone that actually took that culture and that branding and made something of it. You know, yeah. like, yeah, say yes, be positive, make friends, yeah. do things that totally like literally the saying, seek discomfort. Yeah, I don't, I think with humans, like we don't realize what we are doing until it has a label. Um, that can be a good and bad thing, but in this instance, it's a good thing because we're able to actually label like what we're actually doing. So seek discomfort. Oh, I'm actually seeking discomfort. And until we had that brand and like, like you said, we didn't really understand it or really know what it was. I mean, sometimes it is kind of hard to define what seeking discomfort and getting out of your comfort zone is. But at the moment we do have a term that we are following every single day and some sort of knowledge. And that just helps us like excel in life even more than ever before. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I absolutely love it. So you actually been watching them for a minute, but you started being this advocate person, and really <laughs> pushing the branding. When uh, when was the first time you did a meetup, like a meetup of wow. actually getting together with other people, and maybe explain kind of that culture side of it of how yeah. this theory ex expanded? Well, at the time we're actually um, recording this, it's going to be the two years anniversary since Seek Discomfort logo came out as well as um, the community. So there is a community called Yes Fam. It's like a, not really a fandom, I would say. It's more, it is a community. It isn't like normal, like celebrity fans. It's just about a massive community coming together, over 130,000 people on Facebook alone, just sharing their like uncomfortable stories and trying to like share their experiences across the world in a positive way. And yeah, so that was initially formed two years ago. I joined it around like a year and a half ago. So when it was just forming, I remember it was like 20,000 people on the group and now it's 130,000. So that gives you a bit of a time scale. Um, my first meetup was actually when I came to Australia. So 
not only did I move countries alone and like then have to restart my life over but that's I think that's how I made the friends and that's how that's what pushed me to then also go to meetups because I had no one to interact with and what was my next thing I wasn't going to go on dating apps and like make <laughs> friends with that um I was I'm not like that so I decided you know what let's seek discomfort let's see if there's a yes fam community there was and I as soon as I came to Australia I was like right I need to do a meetup um I believe my first meetup was at Bondi Beach the iconic kind of uh landscape here and it was just like a small one like 15 people um just kind of have all bring snacks together just have a chit chin chat like sort of thing sort of thing and yeah like I don't know that was just so small and now like we've done I've probably done like 40 or 50 I can't even remember and wow. we've also had one of the largest meetups in Oceana oh. which was 40 or so people went to a stranger's house and had dinner so oh. it's gone from a small like get together on a beach which isn't really uncom which isn't was not really uncommon sorry but then you've gone to then the next larger scale of yes table yes fam sydney yes table event where a stranger hosted 40 people in his living room and that was crazy <laughs> that is so crazy that is so different like i love this idea of you know because like you said, there's like this celebrity fans, you know, people like there's a lot of fan pages like mm -hmm. I do not see that at all. Being a part no. of the, like being a part of the Yes Theory fam for I think about six months now and watching and learning. It's like it, it's like it's Yes Theory related. It's their branding. It's their culture. It's their channel. It's the message. But it really is a community. People are commenting mm -hmm. and recommenting. They're sharing conversations. People mm -hmm. are planning meetups. They're trying to do yeah. things to actually seek discomfort yeah 100 percent. yeah it's definitely not um a fan but more like a community like you said um and that's what we need in the world like there's so much divide and i think that this um concept is really like the next step in order for people to come and connect together no matter what race religion age gender like there's no age limit there's no kind of it doesn't matter like it doesn't like we can't meet up with you if you come from a different country everyone is so open to meeting new people and i think that that's what we really need in today's world because like so many you know like humans rely on human interaction more than we believe and just like psychological factors as well as just like in general um it's what we're we have the ability to communicate with one another we're so similar yet so disconnected at the same time so we need to really bring that back down and just start from the beginning the basics like actually saying hi to someone like you know mm. are we actually really strangers at all or is that just another concept that's been brought into a world because you just don't necessarily know someone more than their name you know what i mean so mm -hmm. are we actually really strangers or if you think about it we're all humans we're all even though we might be different genders age religion all of that across the world does it really matter about that because as long as we can communicate with one another i would say we're already friends especially because mm -hmm. we're so we're all re linked in terms of bio biological so right. I, yeah, I feel like that is what is bringing us back together to that, that kind of basic level. You know what I mean? Yep. I definitely, it's like you have like a split decision you have to make when you meet someone new or you see a post and it's either engage or disengage, you know, and yeah. a lot of people these days do do that disengage, just pull out. But like you said, if you just start from the beginning and be like, I'm just going to say hi. Like, I'm just going to yeah. say hi. And it always translates to something new and better if you could just take that yeah. first step. I've met so many people in Yes Fam Sydney who I wouldn't really, I didn't think that I would be friends with. So, you know, like you kind of congregate in kind of friendship groups at school or university or something. Um, I, like, I don't know if I wouldn't necessarily cross paths with them at all. And now they've become some of my best friends like literally in my family and it makes me kind of laugh at that because in the past they probably would have gone towards more people with the same interest in terms of education wise or just me on a personal level but because everyone is just no matter what other interests they have it's because it's all coming down to seeking discomfort and saying yes all of them other interests they're just an addition to the friendship so mm -hmm. we're all friends with, with the idea of seek discomfort and yes but if then we have more interest then that's a bonus and then we become even more of a good friend. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah it's so good. Um, and I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a beautiful thing. So 
uh, being a part of this this imperfect fam, Sydney, and all that stuff, because you have the global page, which, like you said, has one hundred thirty thousand right members. Yeah. Something like that. And then Sydney has how much? They Sydney, yes. Has page. over a thousand, around a thousand and one thousand two hundred. Although not everyone is active, we are working on it because um, we want to make sure that everyone feels that sense of community because it's so important in everyone's life. Yep, agreed, agreed. So you've done a couple of things. I believe it was on Yes Fam Sydney that you did the documentary, right? Yes, it's literally just been released a week ago. Um, it was amazing. It was in the process for like a three to four months since like January or February time. And what happened is um, some film crew, they knew what Yes Theory was, but they didn't, they wasn't actually part of the Yes Fam. They didn't know that it was the Yes Fam community. They've been watching Yes Theory, and this is what inspired them to do the documentary. Um, and then they found the Yes Fam community, was like, oh, hey guys, um, since you always say yes to us and all like the whole seat discomfort kind of thing, would you be uh, interested in doing a documentary? We didn't know what it was going to be about. We didn't know that it was going to be as professional as it is. We just thought it was just going to be like a small project for uni, which it is in a way, like, percent of it is small but it goes towards a degree but then we didn't realize how amazing the outcome would be and we probably underestimated them a little bit just because we didn't know what to expect but then expect the unexpected you know what i mean so mm -hmm. we got filmed like four or five times i then went uh, me and three others went and got professionally like recorded in like a studio so we could speak about our experience with seat discomfort and like just yes here in general and then Obviously, I only saw parts of this. I was only on the front line in terms of being filmed. So I didn't know that out like the back backing process and all like the directing and writing and all that. We all all we were also told is that it was gonna be an animated version. So we were thinking, is that mean like Lego or like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> little uh little designs on the screen. We didn't know if it would be our faces. Like we were wondering why it was being recorded, but yet it was gonna be animated. But what it turned out to be is that it was animated in the sense that they have a um, computer screen, someone saying on text message like, hey, would you like to go um, on a road trip? They say, hey, like, I don't think I'm kind of uh, ready for that. I don't want to like get out of my comfort zone. And then that's when it starts rolling and it shows all of a montage and like all of our experiences from meetups and how just by saying yes and seeking discomfort, you can make new friendships, like meet new people and also have an amazing experience. and it's a 10 minute long video it's amazing and yes theory also was able to um reach out to us and see that as well which is amazing which is added bonus so that, that is that it is was absolutely crazy incredible. it I mean, just goes to show how yeah it just goes to show like how uh how big of an impact it's had on our lives the fact that they've now gone and done an actual professional documentary on it um and it's the first yes fam i believe in the world that has done an animated um documentary in that style so I think that that's why it was also reached a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it was nice. just absolutely well done. So beautiful. So you said, was it, was it like a one person that wanted to do this documentary? Like, was it just okay, one? So, yeah. So basically, um, obviously they have a film, they have a project at university and they got told, right, you have the topic of animation. You need to think of everything else yourself. You need to get together a crew. So, for example, sound engineer, video, like videography, like editing, writing, directing, literally producer, like literally like an official film. And so the first person, um, the director came up with the idea and then she had to recruit others that were willing to help her out. And then I think about five of them was the one that um, actually created it all together. Um, but yeah, it was very professional and it wasn't just someone literally filming it with like a small like iphone camera it was right. the full, full gear and hopefully it will be entered into um film festivals next year that's gonna be amazing that is yeah. definitely worth the quality of a film festival i've entered i believe sundance a couple of times and seeing these kind of projects seeing that in there i just feel like that would fit so well it would resonate yeah. with a lot of people especially because it's not like the usual video like not, this mm -hmm. will actually reach other people that haven't ever seen what seat discomfort or yes theory is um not even just yes theory in general but just like the kind of saying yes as simple as that it will like until people become aware they won't know about it and this will be like their first 
steps of coming aware because as they're watching the video they'll have like a new idea and it'll probably resonate with them where that message says like oh i don't want to come out tonight because i feel unmotivated or you know i don't want to or it's out of my comfort zone and they'll be like mm. oh yeah i've had that before i've had that before but mm. then when you see that like, process through the video go like why don't i just say yes next time it could be like those montages next time i could have mm. those experiences like those people and mm. everyone wants to live their life to the fullest right yeah exactly that was a huge difference is it's like it's not even like a it's like a, it's a story but it's like a uh just a, a bunch of stories you know put together in that documentary which really just kind of makes it pop rather than telling a one storyline it's kind of like look at the group of people here yeah it's a different perspective i think because if you just have one perspective then it can be quite biased or just quite limited and obviously seek discomfort and yes there's so many so many different possibilities and all the different meetups i mean there's thousands more meetups than we could have like included or from other countries but um it gives you like a 360 view of what's going on mm -hmm. yeah i love that and just like i think uh yes theory captures really well is because a lot of their videos which really makes me think is they don't just kind of hit these people that say yes they like i i remember the one where they, he wanted to go skydiving and he went to like a oh, university yeah. or something and he went around and he's like do you want to go skydiving to people are like no like who are you no you know and they their first reaction you just see them like these people don't know that they're like about to get money or they're about to get a free fun experience free whatever they just like they're so caught off guard they don't want to seek that discomfort so they just continue on but then yeah. you get that one guy that's like yeah like why not and then he just has this amazing outcome that could have been any of these other people but they said no yeah it just goes to show like just the power of yes and also it's like that's why i like their videos also as well because and um, they're not just asking their friends who are familiar with their brand already they're approaching people that don't know who they are so one it's also spreading the word and just like making them think like you said like what if i just said yes and i could have been a different life path right now um but yeah, just also just going back down to community, like the most basic of community, like a university, which is accessible everywhere. And I think that's what we need to do. And like, we, that's why the message is so powerful right now. And that's why they're growing so much is because it's accessible in all communities. And as long as you like, just literally go up to someone who is also just a human and just like similar to you, I think they'll say yes. And if they don't, then someone else will. There's bound exactly. to be one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it a lot. So when you make, because you've been doing, I mean, you've been grinding. You're doing so much stuff for Yes Sydney and Yes Fam and growing yourself, <laughs> yeah. but also growing the community, which is just huge. Like, how many how many hours a week do you feel like you're putting into all this? Oh, uh, I mean, in the beginning, when I first became admin, which was probably about like eight months ago or so, it wasn't too much just because it was a bit sporadic all over the place. Um, we was having meetups and stuff and I didn't really have the time to then sit down and kind of think about um, inclusivity because I thought that people were, since people weren't coming to meetups that everyone was included, but I can't assume that. And only in recent months have I realised that not everyone felt included and I did not want that to happen or get to that point. So now with COVID, which is a positive thing, I've been able to sit down and kind of look at all the, evaluate our page and evaluate our community in Yes Fam Sydney and kind of see what we need to work on in order to bring back seat discomfort like every single day in people's lives, as well as just make them feel at home like everyone else does. And yeah, so in the mo at the moment, like easily 30, 40 hours a week, I don't even know. But um, that is, this is also because we've just got some a big launches coming up in terms of like living room concerts and stuff. So normally it would be about 10 or 15, like I'm just double at the moment just because of all the bigger events mm. that are due, especially with the two year anniversary, which we're Heck celebrating. Yeah. That's amazing, yo. So <laughs> like, has, I heard that Yes Theory has followed you guys, right? Yes, they have, yeah. That is crazy. Like, to be acknowledged yeah. is just insane. Yeah, like it, it, was such a, it was such a big achievement, but I mean, like, we didn't expect it. And I think that that's what people need to realise, is that you shouldn't expect 
them to follow you or to notice you because you should just be be genuine yourself and just be seeking discomfort every single day not because you want them to follow you and get noticed that's what we were doing is since january or december just literally posting our meetups posting zoom calls posting like some obviously the documentary releases and stuff and then it just a matter of fact they noticed it because we thought outside of the box with the documentary which hadn't ever been done before and plus we were just always spreading their word and their message and just being so genuine i mean of course it would be a lie for me to say that it would it wasn't on, on a goal of ours to get yes siri to notice us but um it wasn't the first goal it wasn't like oh my god if we don't get them to follow us it's end of the world mm-hmm. it wasn't and we still continued the same meetups and everything like that and just the community and, and continued to spread it around and um grow it and as a consequence they were able to notice us and i'm very grateful that that has even happened like the amount of opportunities in the past month has been crazy and i am just so i'm on behalf of yes i'm sydney we're so grateful for all of this that's so beautiful yo i i just think it's one of the most coolest things to not have a fan page to like yeah get noticed because i have their first album and i have their autograph and i took a picture with them and blah 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 it's like you really are taking this this message that they spread so far and and getting so many more getting more people involved which is just one of my favorite things of just the yes fam global page is seeing these people like I'm new to yes fam, but this is what I've done this week to seek discomfort. Does anybody have any more ideas? And this community engagement is unreal. It's like a whole different level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, and just pe- people just need to remember that no matter what, like it doesn't matter about the external factors such as yes, they're following them or them getting noticed by a seek discomfort brand or yes, they're meetups, et cetera, like the big pages or the big admins. It is just about, concentrating on themselves and people around them spreading the positive message and when people like start to say like to their friends I've actually said to my friends hey do you know seek discomfort or yes theory and they're like no and I go on to explain what it is just by doing that it gives them a new idea and then they go and like they're inquisitive about it go and um, potentially join the community or watch their videos and if one person just keeps doing that to like a handful of people in their lives then eventually it will just be a domino effect across the world And that's how I see it. I didn't, that was my goal. That was like, I want to mark this um, kind of positive um, like message on the world as well. And I think that seek discomfort really, and yes, they really like resonate with me what message I wanted to spread. And so Mm. that gives me also like, it's really hard for me to say like to people like to give my opinion on the world and then for it to change like that. But because I then have Yes Series videos to back me up or the Seek Discomfort brand in the community, which I can then follow through with them and say, like, look, look at this community and look at the evidence that we have that it's like impacting people's lives, then it gives it much more credibility and accountability. And they're more likely to also then tell more people rather than Mm. me just saying, like, hey, you need to go and tell people to seek discomfort. They're like, what is that? One, we don't have any evidence. One, we don't know what that is but we need some hardcore, like, kind of what we can watch, visualise, and that's what exactly what Yes Sir has done. So I, I think that. that's why it's spreading so much as well. Right, right. And especially because Yes Theory is the YouTube channel, but Seek Discomfort is, like, this sub-branding, but also the clothing line. Yes. How many How many Seek Discomfort clothes do you think you have? Actually, funny story. I did not have anything until my 20th birthday, which was a month ago. Really? And I always wanted it. Um, I mean, I got gifted a necklace back in January from a random stranger, which is funny because she was from, she knew what Yesiri was. So she gave me a necklace. But um, in terms of clothing, had nothing. And the my 20th birthday, obviously it was during COVID and it still is. And I was kind of, I wasn't sad about it. I was just like, I'm going to try and make it the best it can be anyway, even if I'm alone. Anyway. In the morning, I woke up and there was one of the Yes Fam members stood outside my house with a cake saying happy birthday from love from the Yes Fam Sydney, as well as like a whole package of um, merchandise, which they ordered three months ago and they all chipped in together. And I knew nothing about it. 
This and is insane. I know. So they had they gave me a flag and I've got like a, a long sleeve t shirt and I've got some more necklaces and stuff and stickers and all of this and they really kitted me out and they is no, it was like that was amazing, like just because I also hadn't ever um, celebrated my birthday like uh, for 10 years and they knew that and so they saw like these this is how you know they're true friends and like the community isn't like is so genuine and just so pure and no matter who you are no matter what your age etc because look what they did for me and I didn't ever like I would never in a million years have even thought they would have do, done that and they turned up on my doorstep at 5 a.m in the morning one of them and presented me with a cake which they picked up the night before and also spent money on me and shipped it from America. Oh. Like that was a thing, like I couldn't order anything in previous times because the shipping and stuff was pretty expensive. And for us, it takes a while as well, like four weeks, four weeks or something. So I never like kind of clicked the checkout button, although I was planning to on my birthday. It was in your cart. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was in my cart. Don't worry, I subscribed and everything. But it was just like, whether or not to like kind of push myself and spend like that much money but um no they gifted me it and honestly that was the best day of my life L literally i think it was one of the best days of my life and that was what only a, a month ago wow what a beautiful story what a <laughs> yeah. community what a beautiful community man it's just seeing how much it can just reach people and how much people can really help each other or just give such positive light especially like you said during covid you know one of these hard times for someone to show up and be like we got you this like that is that's incredible yeah Shout out i mean to them. They, i mean they planned to do like a zoom call or something anyway on my birthday which was just in itself like something i didn't expect and also something just so small but so big in my heart and for them to then do all these extra things like that was crazy and um Let's just hope I don't have to uh, live up to all of this now because I've got a lot of yes fan members to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a thousand now to buy gifts for. Oh, but no. It's, but it's not about gifting. It's just about giving a good message and a positive message amongst each other, saying happy birthday with the sincerest, like actual um, kind of meaning behind it. If they just said happy birthday, like to me, without anything else, I would have been so grateful and just so happy just because I know that a year ago or two years ago I have more friends and family now than I ever used to and they're actually genuine and that's, that's amazing important. yeah that's incredible um if you don't mind my asking like did you move from Sydney or did you move from London to Sydney by yourself yeah yeah really that's crazy yeah. it's kind of crazy like it's been difficult and I wouldn't suggest people moving 10,000 miles or kilometers <laughs> across the world alone at age 18 as well as uh you know no kind of direction in where you're going but um obviously I seek discomfort <laughs> which is probably the biggest seeking discomfort I've ever done in my life yeah um it's been difficult like I did become homeless in the process like there's been a lot of things that have gone on but now look where I am like a year later it's all been worth it and now on my way studying finally next year um because as a result like i have had to put my kind of career kind of prospects on hold just for two years but it's been so worth it because so much self-development has happened and mm. um that i wouldn't have been able to do in the uk if i went on to do university straight away so right. i'm very grateful like sometimes i might think to myself like oh my god like how long is this going to take? Or like, I still don't have the funds for university, for example, and I still need to save like $5,000 by myself, which is proving difficult. But then I think back to myself, like it's not the end of the world for one. And two, I'm, I'm here. I got to where I wanted to be. Like it's a bonus for me to even save for university, let alone be in the country. I know so many other people that can't get into Australia because of the, the restrictions and stuff and just visa in general. I'm very lucky I had some sort of relation here in, to enable me to stay and I'm, I'm just grateful about that so yeah that's awesome and that like you said that's got to be one of the biggest things I've ever heard to just up and move but I mean yeah. it's one of those things where like once you do it and you just you play your cards right like things can end up really well like you have like you have this community you are planning to go to to college and things like that what do you want to yeah. study what do you want to study when you go to college yeah. university? okay so since the age of eight 
I've always wanted to be a humanitarian aid worker, um, either for like a non-governmental organisation or maybe the humanitarian, like United Nations, sorry, and that's obviously a big one. Um, but I'm always a dreamer, like I've always been a dreamer, but I'm also a doer. So since age of eight, I've been on that path. Like, although some kind of, it's kind of changed like in some aspects, as in like what field and stuff, um, I've always had that kind of direction towards like, that's what how I'm going to make my mark on the world. I love geography, like I absolutely love science and geography, but I didn't want to be a geography teacher if stuck in a room and teaching about the world when why can't I just go and change it like in front line. And that's when I knew what I wanted to do. So in order to get there, I will need to do international relations with French at a University of Sydney. Um, and the reason I say French is because to get into the United Nations, you do need to know a second language and they're based in Belgium. So they need like, you need a fr like a French background. Um, so yeah, if anyone's watching this and also has the same sort of goal, then I would definitely advise to um, look at all job postings and stuff on United Nations or NGOs because I didn't even realise I needed to learn French like three years ago. And that's when I started to panic because I'm not a linguist. Um, mm. But in order to get there, you need like some sort of uh, experience and backing as well. So yeah, that's, I, I can't wait. <laughs> it's been a long time coming and I'm saving for university now, like I said, by myself, but um, slowly getting there and I'm determined and that's all that matters. As long as you believe in yourself then and take action to do it, then you'll get there. Mm -hmm. I 100% believe. And I, I can agree with you so hard. It's like, you have this, this vision you have to like, this is what I want. And yes, things have changed. Like I knew when I graduated high school, I wanted to go to college. I knew it. And I spent yeah. eight years in dance. I was a hip hop dancer. It was my oh, thing. Really? For a minute. It was for a long time. And I realized I loved film shooting videos and putting other people on camera and making their stories come to life. And so I switched sides, but the, the goal was still there. And now in two days, I graduate from university, which is super exciting. So congratulations! <laughs> thank you so much. But it's it's that vision of you have to see that the light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to yeah. keep moving. You might have to swerve a little bit. Things might change, but just keep heading that direction. And it will happen. And I just have no doubt that you'll get there. Something that really um, kind of resonates with me, I think someone shared kind of a similar quote is like, don't imagine, like, don't see yourself as in there in like two or three years time. Why don't you see yourself there now? In mm. like, cause the human brain is really clever at visualizing and having that imagination as if you were there right now. And we can have that sense of feel feeling and we can imagine what it would feel like to graduate, for example, or to get your first ever like professional job. And so that's kind of along the lines of manifestation sort of stuff. And um, that's actually kind of helped me. So when I'm like meditating or something like that, or I've got a vision board, for example, with some goals on, including the United Nations stuff, I'll look at it every day and I'll think about it for like two minutes. All you need is two minutes a day. And just think about like what, like just the excitement feeling, you know, when you have like, you get a good grade or you get an appraisal from someone, it'll be like that similar feeling and it'll be for yourself. And that feeling pushes me to keep working towards it because then I know that I'm going to get there. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I, I 100% like, and you, I feel like you'd just be a great motivational speaker. I feel like this is something <laughs> you just got to jump right in and start speaking. Cause I feel like if we put you on stage, you can really get to people's to people's hearts and heads and really get a message through the, through to them you know i'm working on it <laughs> i'm working on it it's been it's that's meant been mentioned a few times to me and also just like kind of along the lines of life coaching um so at the moment i'm thinking that you know possibly possibly i might not become a humanitarian aid worker but maybe i'll branch off into life coaching instead but on a global level or something like that you know what i mean because i still right. want to have that global impact um which is my goal but yeah, I'm working on trying to get into a TEDx speak, uh, talk next year. So that's what you just said with motivational speaking. But yeah, <laughs> Yo, that would be amazing. Yo, TED, TEDx, TED Talks can be difficult to get into. And I know because I've applied to two of them and got yeah. denied both times. Like they, they can be a very difficult thing. But if you mention anything in this message, this branding, and I mean, you know so much about all of this and running a page and and being so 
so good with the branding and the messaging and how to get people involved. I feel like you could really do a dope speech. Like it'd be really yeah. cool. Um, and if anyone's um, also listening that just like, if you are thinking of doing a motivational talk or anything like that, then you really need to connect with as many people that have done it because they all have different experiences and different like paths on how they went about it. And I've not realized so much like I, this, this kind of goal only came into my head, like, in terms of I want to do it by next year three weeks ago and since then every single day I've had like a call with like a past TED speaker or from one of the yes fam the yes fam community is really good to get in contact with because so many of them have done motivational speaking and since speaking with all of them I've realized like what I need to change or what I need to develop on or just like in general like whether my idea is an idea worth sharing and that's what TED the talks all about is like has is this this new idea that no one really knows about that it will engage the audience and you can spread across the world so yeah um just do as many things as you can and this doesn't just apply to just talk any goal if you know anyone that like in connection with a goal you have then reach out to as many people as you can um and yeah it just gives you more experience and just more kind of a a wider perspective because obviously at the moment we can only see our own and that we think that was the best in the world but uh, no one is like we said imperfect <laughs> We're imperfect, imperfect but perfect but so. exactly right it's a beautiful message yo but that's just that's awesome yo i really really hope you can do something like that but i know you were t- you were talking about about doing a kind of ted talk style talk on yes sydney right yeah so i thought because in order to apply for a TED talk, you do need a portfolio or like some sort of links for YouTube and stuff like that. So I thought, why not get the film crew involved from the documentary? They say yes, obviously, because of the seeking discomfort stuff. Um, and do like a mini um, kind of talk in front of my first kind of small audience. Because with TED talks, they're going to be like 100 or thousands, you don't know. And right. whilst I have done speeches in front of, like a thousand maximum. This was only three, this was three years ago. So I haven't developed since then and need to develop for my future ideas. And so, um, yeah, after COVID ends, we have planned a Yes Fam X talk <laughs> in style of um, the kind of TED talks. Um, we will make like a little sign and stuff as well, just to make it a bit more official, get some mics and everything. And That's that not awesome. only can I practice, but then also gives a new, it gives a chance for people to seek discomfort as well and speak about something they love, even if they don't want to be a motivational speaker. Maybe you even give them a new idea to be one. You know what I mean? Until mm-hmm. you have that exposure, you won't know until you try. And I've also, in a week's time, like on Wednesday, I believe, um, I have a talk on Zoom. So there's five of us from Yes Fam Sydney, Yes Fam, sorry, just the community, the global one. And we're doing a motivational talk for five minutes each um, on Zoom. So yeah, that's a bit more as well. That's awesome, yeah. yo. You I mean it, the grind is real over there. Oh, it I is. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's so I, I, it. I mean, so it definitely tiring. seems like it. Yeah, it's so worth it, but so tiring and like, but it's worth it, honestly. The opportunities mm. are limitless, and humans are so limitless. We just have to realize that. And once you become aware of that, and then believe in yourself, like it doesn't matter if people don't believe in you. It's, it comes down to you because you're the one that has to put in the effort. You're the one that has to take the tools like I'm giving you guys now to go and like, take action on it. But it has to be you, the one that gets out of bed, go and like manifest your dreams, meditate, make yourself calm, connect with the rest of the community. Like, um, so yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm totally with you. It, it, people will, people just don't understand another person's story. Like I could sit here and, and talk to you. Like you, you tell me all this information. I'm like, man, this is so much, but I would never understand like running, uh, running all of these things, you know, simultaneously and keeping busy and seeking my own discomfort and all of these things that like, you know what your dreams are, you know how to get there. And I hate when anybody puts input on that, like, Oh, that's a bad idea. Like you don't know a quarter of it, not even the half, like, you know, so little about how much, this is I've been doing you know you like you said you've been running this page for eight months like you know the community you know the message you know the branding you've been uh, a fan and an advocate of yesterday for a long time Mm -hmm. like you know this stuff like only you can get it done 
only I can get it done. Yes, external um, kind of inputs are valid. And I don't like say, oh, I don't want anyone to tell me what to do because I'm always up for improvement and as well as to de develop myself as a person, as well as a community. And it all comes down back to that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, like as long as you believe yourself, and you put the effort in yourself then who's to say that you can't do it yourself mm -hmm. it's just you like yes people might give you hate and say like oh i i don't think you you're capable but that's them putting negative thoughts into their mind and that's their thoughts consuming their mind and putting them behind in their life mm -hmm. because their thoughts are about someone else and not themselves okay so now you just have to ignore that and think of like think of it like that actually all these hate comments they're not even worth my time at all because they're actually affecting the person that's giving the hate more than me because they're filling their life up with negative feelings and thoughts. So what, what mm. I can do is rather than um, kind of engaging with them and letting it get me down is I can just block them out my life and continue with the positive thoughts that I have and full force, full throttle ahead. And you'll see the difference in negative and the positive people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's people with good critique, but there's people with just pointless critique like you suck yeah you're terrible just to bring like, someone down, yeah yeah like how like, does that, that help just, me <laughs> that's just the spitefulness and just because probably they don't have a kind of comfort themselves you know what i mean just because mm -hmm. they probably don't know what goal path they're on so it's intimidating for people that do um so i think that's where that's where the hate and stuff uh, stems from but what you can do all you can do and all i can do is just advise them not be negative back to them, not have an argument, advise them, continue spreading my message. And what they will see is when people start to be more impacted positively, they'll be like, oh, I actually might start listening or I actually might start taking on this um, kind of advice and things that people are saying around the world and start changing their life in a small um, way. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. So you did mention at one point too that you actually had a podcast uh, I believe it was called the Nutrition Expedition, right? Yeah. So, so why did you stop doing that podcast? Okay, so um, when doing a podcast, as you know, it's pretty uh, intense. Um, we, I see just comes there as well. Like me and the co-host, we literally met one time. We didn't hardly knew each other, and was like, "Oh, so we make a podcast." He was very into fitness and nutrition in times like he had a degree in it, which was good backing. Um, but then I also had the mental health side of things because I personally had struggled with depression and anxiety as well as just like eating disorders and stuff. And then also I just had like the kind of motivational kind of from experience and I was able to give people those tools in order to help them. So yeah, the podcast was about um, basically like a holistic health. So how to improve not only your fitness, but how important mental that your mental state is when you're trying to reach a goal and so I was speaking on that behalf however during filming and recording the podcast I found myself actually becoming unbalanced myself and it was just ironic that I was talking um, about mental states and how to improve your mental state but yet I couldn't take on my own advice and the reason being is just because one the podcast was a lot of time when I had other things going on and also um I don't know I think it just it was something I was passionate about but it wasn't the right timing in that sense um yes I was passionate about the subject but it wasn't something like like yes Siri for example seeking discomfort it wasn't something that I embodied every single day because um I hadn't yet reached my mental like 100% mental state and this was about four or five months ago so since then I have reached that but only since the podcast left my life and that just goes to show that it was holding me back um, from reaching my full potential just for now. In the future, I'm not like not saying no, but um, it would be something when I'm 100% ready because I want to make an impact on the world where I'm also doing it myself. I don't want to be hypocritical. I don't want, that's what I was feeling like I was getting like at the beginning, it was fine, but it started for me to feel like, oh, you know what, like behind the scenes, I didn't feel good about my mental state or fitness in general and i just felt like i was lying and that's not a person that i'm like so yeah mm. yeah it definitely can be so much like finding the guest sitting down doing the interview the editing the posting the thumbnails the titles the distributing it's a it could be a lot of work and that's why i asked because i feel like you 
are doing a lot, you know, so I was curious of that if, you know, it was more time restraints and kind of like some personal identity, just trying to kind of figure that all yeah. out. But you, but you do think you can jump back into it one day, right? Yeah, one day once I have that sort of more experience, um, especially with talking and stuff, and then also just like an idea that I'm very, very passionate about, that is something that I would never want to stop, you know what I mean? And that's what it should be, because if I'm going to put, like I said, something out into the world, I want it to make a last, long-lasting um, impact, not just a short-term one. Um, it doesn't really matter about the reach to me. It just matters about whether someone listens and then goes and changes the way they might do something or um, changes their outlook on life. So maybe like a Yes, a yes Fam Sydney podcast? <laughs> uh, maybe. But I do think Yes Siri have a podcast coming out, so it would be very cool to hear those sort of uh, stories and topics or whatever mm. they will be. Yeah, I'm excited for that. That's going to be really cool to like witness and watch. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna turn out really good. Mm. Molly, I have everything I, I I wanted to ask you today. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I would just like to say to everyone that's listening that you need to go in. So it's like you need to fulfill your life for yourself. I mean, yes, community is a really big thing and I love my community so much. But at the end of the day, you're with yourself for the rest of your life. You need to just put yourself first as much as you put the community first. And I know it takes quite a while to find that balance. But once you do, it's so worth it and you thrive in life. Um, You really do need to find your own happiness. It is your own happiness for a reason. So yes, we have external communities that will help us feel more positive and psychologically more positive, which is true. But then we also need to be like, hey, like not be dependent too much on others because um, not everyone can help you and you have to be the one that helps yourself and believes that you can do it. Like I can't give you, um, I can't literally put my brain to your brain and be like, look, now I believe it. Like now I believe in myself. It needs to be you that goes and takes the tools to go and do it so if you're listening to this i also would suggest that if you have a lot of things on right now or feel like you can't get in can't get to a goal it's kind of out of reach or feels impossible which nothing is impossible um to do a simple to-do list now that you've become aware of what you need to do by listening to this podcast you then can go on to do a to-do list just the small things first will be fine um just because by tackling the smaller things even though you might want to tackle the big things first um just by bringing it back down, it will then allow you to progress to much bigger things and your goals in life. Um, and yeah, I think when you start to have that routine in your life every single day, your anxiety and kind of um, feeling like you're getting nowhere will calm down a bit. And yeah, just remember to look after yourself and the others in community and just spread as much positivity around the world as you can. Yes, I agree with every word you said, <laughs> Oh, and seek I, discomfort. <laughs> seek discomfort, yo. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Molly, for coming on the show. Thank and you we, so much. And we will see you guys next time. Peace out.